Bruchim Aboyim. We are now on the fifth lecture um, on the Haggadah, the Passover Haggadah. And um, we finished last week with the five rabbis who were gathered in Bnei Brak and they were up all night talking about the Haggadah. We're up to the wording that says, Amr B'laz ben Azari, or B'laz ben Azari, said, Hare Ani, Kiven Shiv Mishan, I am like 70 years old. And uh, it says, Kiven, like 70 years old. So why not just 70 years old, if that's what he was? And the Gemara tells us a story that uh, the head of the academy was Rebun Gamliel. And he had had a debate or an argument, so to speak, with Rabbi Yoshua, and there was a bit of controversy between the rabbis, and Rabbi Gamliel, who was the head of the academy, was impeached because of it, showing who had, he had denigrated the honor of Rabbi Yoshua, and they felt he was too tough. And so what they did is they impeached him, but they needed a replacement. And the problem that they felt was that all the replacements, the men of Rabbi Akiva, for example, was one of them. Rabbi Akiva was descended from converts. Rabbi Gamliel was a descendant of King David, of Davin So they needed someone with the same type of pedigree. So Rabbi Lezman Azari was that person. He was an Eloi. He was a child prodigy and uh, a great individual, but he was very young. He was only 18 years old. And when they offered him the position, he went, out, went home and told his wife, and uh, she kind of chuckled and says, you know, you're just a young fisher. What are you going to do with all these elderly sages? I mean, why would you be the one to be the head of the academy? And he really was unsure of what to do. And then he had next morning when he woke up, there were 18 strands of white going through his beard, which he took as a sign from heaven that he should take the position. So even though he was only 18 years old, he looked as if he was a 70-year-old man because of the white in his beard. And uh, he took over the position, and they eventually divided it between him and Rebbe Gamliel. There are other factors that are mentioned in the Gemara, but this isn't the place to elucidate on them. Uh, in addition to that, we believe in what's called Gilgulim. Uh, a Gilgul is a uh, reincarnation of sorts. Uh, we are all old souls. We have been alive in other dimensions and other times. And um, uh, Allah's ben Azariah was a Gilgal, a reincarnation of the prophet Samuel, Shmuel HaNavi. And we know that Shmuel HaNavi lived to the age of 52. So 52 and 18 is 70. So that's why he referred to himself as being Kaven Shiv Mishana, as if I'm 70 years old. And... Um, and he said, I did not, uh, also the number 70 uh -huh. represents the perfection of one's seven emotions. We know there are seven emotional traits God takes upon himself, as we have mentioned in the first lecture with the Seder plate. And when each emotion is fully developed and balanced by its ten facets, in addition, 70 is associated with earthliness, as in the 70 nations of the world, also the 70 angels to represent them. Achieving the level of 70 refers to ref refining one's portion of the world, elevating one's earthly self and sphere of influence. Now the Hebrew letter for the uh, number 70 is the ayin. Uh, also ayin in Hebrew, the word, means eye. The one should develop a holy eye to see godliness and to know uh, it as, as one knows what the eye can see. Again, we believe that the eye is the window to the soul, the only part of the body that resists being touched by anything that's physical. Um, the, uh, again, we, some say we have two eyes, one to see ourselves and one to, in the world, and one to see God. And uh, this is also significant of the large ayin in the word when we say the Shema, hear, O Israel, that there is the, the word Shema means to hear, one sense. In order to hear, you have to speak the second sense, an ion connecting with spirituality of the eyes, with being a large ion in the Shema, based on a Rebbe. And it continue, now continues, I did not remember, Shete Omar, that, it, that uh, so to speak, succeeded. I've not succeeded yet in having it see us, Mishraim Balilos, 
of the Exodus from Egypt mentioned every night until Ben Zoma expounded upon it and said, in order that you may remember the days you left Egypt, all the days of your life, is what the verse says. The phrase, the days of your life, would have indicated only the days. The addition of the word call all includes the nights as well. The sages declared the days of your life would mean only the present world. The addition of all also includes the age of the Messiah. And again from Ben Zoma, uh -huh. uh, Rebbe Lozman and I was concerned uh, about the fact that a miracle had been done for him and the fact that his beard showed the white strands and there was a whole question of a miracle is done for someone. Does it show his greatness or does it show deficiency in the person? That a miracle has to be done. And Benzoma, many thought that it showed deficiency. Benzoma showed him that it was actually showed the greatness in the person. Again, why Rebbe Lozman Azari was very happy with Benzoma. Now, it says, again, call you mechayecha, all the days of your life. Lahavi limosa Mashiach, Hebrew says, to bring the days of the Messiah. Now, the, uh, the word Mashiach has within it uh, the, uh, is an acronym for the four names that the Messiah can have. The Mem stands for Menachem. Again, that's why the Lubavitcher Rebbe, whose name was Menachem Mendel, Again, that was also a sign where many people felt that he was the Messiah. The Shin stands for Shiloh, the Yud for Yainan, and the Ches for Hanina. Uh, so these are the uh, four names, again, which the name Mashiach alludes to. Now, um, also that the, uh, this is also a hint that all of one's life should be dedicated to the bringing of the Messiah which we don't really know. Again, that we just believe that it is a better time, a time of peace, and a time when the world will move into a new dimension, something we uh, look forward to. The Haggadah continues, uh, with, uh, which will lead us into a very important part. It's Baruch HaMakam, blessed is the place. Baruch Hu, blessed is he. Baruch Shunas and Terol, may as well, blessed he who brought Torah to his, to his people Israel. Baruch Hu, blessed is he. Now, the word Baruch here is mentioned four times. And again, as we know, there are four cups of wine, four questions, four different redemptions, four sons, as we'll come to next. And the four alludes to, the, again, the obligation to bring the carbon toda, the, the uh, sacrifice of thanksgiving for the four calamities that the nation of Israel experienced as they left Egypt. Again, one that they traveled in the desert, that they crossed to sea, they traveled in the desert, um, and uh, they were freed from p prison, and they recovered from a serious illness. Again, four, four, four calamities that they were saved from. Now, why the word Baruch four times? And it's important because every child is blessed. Baruch means to be blessed uh, in his own unique way. Um, none of us are the same, which makes life very interesting. Uh, each of us has their own unique purpose. And that, that's why, again, these are all broken up into individuals. Also, we, that we give thanks to God, even for those sons who are not righteous, because they are descendants of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the forefathers. And their souls are essentially pure. And there's always hope for tshuva, uh, based in the Book of Heritage. So, again, we never give up hope on a child. That's not our place to do so. Um, now, it's interesting that it uses the term Baruch HaMokam, and what it's alluding to is God. So it just should say Baruch Hashem, some sort of name of God. Why HaMokam, the place? The answer is because God is not in the world. The world is within God. We, so to speak, live within the mind of God. That's all that exists, is God. Also, God gives each, op each person a window of opportunity to change his life and become a Baal Shuva, to become a repentant. Um, there are many windows of opportunity in life. Um, a, person, uh, a person gets married, a person has a child, uh, a person uh, has great successes. Those are good things. But even sickness, um, near-death experiences. Uh, in fact, there's an interesting, cute story of a Rabbi Roy Manus Friedman, who was giving a lecture in California, and there was a person who came up to him after the lecture and told him that he was a rep repentant Jew about Chuva, and he said that he was driving down the coastal road, 
and uh, he was distracted and his car went off the cliff and miraculously landed on guide wires and he walked away without a scratch and uh, because of that he told the rabbi that he had become a Baal Shuva, he had come connected to God because God saved him and the rabbi chuckled and then he said so let me get this straight so you became religious because of the fact that your car went off the cliff and landed on the guide wires and you were saved without any injury so that's why you became religious he said right he said you ever think about who threw you off the cliff and uh, so God is always correct creating opportunities uh, again a person uh, death person says Kaddish uh, person has a very serious illness or someone close to you all of these things are different windows of opportunity that brings a person to godliness so that's how Mukum much like a spaceship coming in from outer space, has to come through a window in order to come back. Also, it alludes to the Hamakam, the place. What is the place? And again, that alludes to the Temple Mount. Even today, we believe that our prayers go from there up to heaven. We believe that where the Temple Mount is stands today, even though there is no temple, that above it there is a temple. Everything in this world is a reflection from the world above. That's why there's a whole question as to whether we will build a third temple or just wake up one day and it'll be sitting on the Temple Mount, totally finished. And it continues and it talks about the fact of these four sons, our Bob Bunim, four sons. Now, it's interesting that the uh, numerical value of the word Bane, of son, is 52. And uh, four times 52 is the, the numerical value of the name Yitzchak, Isaac. And because we believe that Yitzchak embodies all the four children. He is called the true father of Israel uh, because of the fact he, his, he did not give up on an Asaph, that he kept his son Asaph, though he was not righteous, close to him and never gave up on the fact of making him better. And because of that, there are many righteous converts that come from Asaph. And um, actually there were four evil decrees against the male children, again, as to why we have the four sons. Paro kept them, the men in the field, so that no sons would be born. Also, if sons were born, he commanded the midwives to kill them. Thirdly, if they did not kill them, then his soldiers threw the baby boys into the Nile. And fourth, that if the, that still didn't succeed, he had them put into the, put their bodies into the walls as fillers for the bricks at the, uh, for the buildings the Jews were building. If a man did not fulfill his quota. So again, the child was put into the wall based on the total smosha. Also, we know there's another thing of Paro bathing in the blood of young children. 150 in the morning and 150 in the evening to cure his skin disease. Now, it talks about, the Torah talks about these four sons, Echot Chachem, one wise, V'yachem Russia, one evil, V'yachem Tom, one simple, V'yachem Shedein Elishel, and the last one who was not able to ask. Now again, we see the word Echod, one, repeated four times. It could just say Echod Chachem, V'Rasha, V'Tom, and Shedein Elishel. Why is the word one repeated four times? So, one means that every Jew is unique and must serve God with his own uniqueness. This is one of the reasons why in our Shemona Esther we say, okay, Abraham, okay, Yitzchak, okay, Yaakov, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We could just say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We'd know the same thing. But each one of them served God in his own unique way. Abraham, again, the paradigm of kindness. Uh, Isaac, the paradigm of severity, of toughness. And uh, Yaakov was the combination of the two, what we call Tiferis, which is beauty. Um, also, the word uh, Echod has an numerical value of 13. Four times 13 is 52, which is the word name for the numerical value, value of the word Bain, which is son. Uh, so what we really think is that all four of these um, allude to one son, that within each one of us, is a wise person, is an evil person, is a simple person, and a person a little bashful and is afraid, is embarrassed to ask. Also, the name Eliyahu has a numerical value of 52. That we know that before the coming of the Messiah, Eliyahu will be the person who will herald in the coming of the Messiah. 
Um, so it says, it begins with, uh, again, so the question becomes, why four sons? That we must present Torah on what, whatever level uh, the person we are talking to can understand. Um, if you're not talking, if you talk above a person, it's a waste of time. Uh, in fact, a person shows his greatness by being able to bring it down to the lowest level. That shows true knowledge and true greatness because, again, it shows you really know the topic. So to be able to speak to all these four individuals on their level shows a certain greatness. Also, again, as I mentioned before, all of us all have these traits within us. So uh, it's uh, how what a person says. It's interesting because so, it says, uh, the, the, it says, Chacham. First, let's deal with why the order. It's arranged in the order of descending or depth of intellect based on the Avudraham. So, so again, because of the question, there's different, there are different ways that they're mentioned in the Torah. But the Haggadah has put it in the way of wise, evil, simple, and then one who doesn't know. And we'll talk some more about that order. Now, it begins with the words, Chacham Mahu Omar. So a wise son, what does he say? So it's interesting, a person, ex a person expresses who he is by what he says. That's how you know, because the truth is when you meet someone, you don't know who they are. It's by what they say that you come to know them, and that's why with the wise person and the evil person, and even the simple person, the term used, Mahomer, what does he say? We do not have that for the one does, that does not ask. Now, in the Shema we say, you should teach it to your children, but the Barta bum and speak about them. Again, the word bum, what are you speaking about? The base is the first letter of the written Torah, gracious, and the mem is the first letter of the oral Torah, the Mishnah, may aim aside from when. So the Dibarta bum, speak in them, means to speak in words of Torah. And the, uh, so there are four words here. And also the word banach, your children, has four letters. Again, alluding to the four sons. Now what's interesting is the word chacham, has a numerical value of 68, which is exactly the same numerical value as the word Chaim, which is life. The first blessing that we say in the request in the uh, Shemon Esrei, Atachonein Adam Das, we ask God for intellect. Everything begins with intellect. You've got to remember, we're not talking about a tzaddik. The first son is not necessarily the righteous son. He's called the wise son. And that becomes because wisdom can only come through, I mean, righteousness can only come to a person having some wisdom, of having some knowledge, being able to understand. And that's how we find God, through knowledge. Also, the word atachone, that blessing, has 67 letters in it, plus the verse itself, again, alluding to the 68, which giving it chayim. Also, there are 17 words, which is tov, which is good for both this world and the world to come. Again, the word chayim, plural. A Jew has two worlds. The world we live in and the world we try to get to of eternity. And it says, so the question that it's interesting, both will see the Russia. The evil son and the wise son both ask the same question. So the question we're going we're gonna to try to figure out is why is one wise and one wicked? So what's the question? So the wise son, Hakam Mahomer, what does he say? What are the testimonies and the statutes and the, and the civil laws? Should Siva Hashem Alokeinu Eschem, which the Lord our God has commanded you, be afat to Omer Lo, you shall say to him, Kehilchos Pesach, like the laws of Passover, Aim Maftir and Achra Pesach Avikomen. We do not eat anything after we have the Avikomen. That's the last thing that we eat. Now, how do we know he is wise? By virtue of the fact that he breaks down the commandments into categories, based on the Barbanel. There are three types of laws that we have. There are edus. Edus are the testimonies, holidays. Every, every country has them. All religions have them. Special days. Um, then the mishpatim are civil laws. Again, all societies need that. What's unique to Judaism is the chukim, the statutes. The statutes have no logic to them. The other two are very logical. And it's a very important, what makes everything logical is the chukim, that which makes no sense. Because in life, we don't necessarily understand everything. And especially not now. 
And it's a little bit of an audacity to think anyways that you can understand God. So and what we do many times in life is judge God, try to understand God, put God in human terms. Now he brings himself down to our level so we can have some sort of understanding of him. But there's no way for us to elevate ourselves to his level. All we need to know is that there are things that we may not understand. And it's much like taking an exam. A hundred questions, if you're stuck on number three, move on. And if you have time, go back. If not, 99 is not a bad score. If you stick on number three until you figure it out, you flunk the exam. person needs to know in life, just move on. That you're not, some people have that personality, have to solve everything. No one can solve everything. Sometimes it just is what it is. And the other part is there's no greater joy than, than later on finding an answer to a question that you had. Quite by accident, sometimes just by delving even further as you move through life. And sometimes life itself is the answer. And it says, Ashativa Shemalo Kenu. Again, that becomes a major difference. The wise son uses God's name as his gods, the Lord our God. Whereas the Russia, the evil son, will make no mention of God at all. Also, that the wise son fulfills the mitzvah. So, what he does is he's at the Seder, he's doing everything he has to do, but he wants to understand. So, after he's already done the act, now he goes to his father and he says, why are we doing it? Whereas the Russia, the evil son, says, I'm not doing anything until I understand exactly what it is, until he agrees. So really, it's based on his reasoning and his logic. And the only thing that he serves is himself, because it's based on himself. Also, the wise son asks a question and deserves an answer. Whereas the wicked son just makes an abusive statement, as we'll see, and that the service of God is pointless, based on the Meshachachma. And we answer the wise son, you say to him, Kihilchos Pesach, like the laws of Pesach. Now, why I mean Kihilchos? That we celebrate Pesach just like our ancestors, even though we do not have the Paschal offering anymore. So it's similar, Kihilchos, not as the laws themselves, because we can't bring the Paschal offering. So it's similar to, and actually we bring the sacrifice, so to speak, with our lips, as it says in Hosea. And also, therefore, we do not eat anything after the afikomen, based on the birchas hashir, because uh, that the the matzah that we break off that we call the afikomen is in lieu of the paschal offering. So once we eat that at the end of the seder, we don't eat anything else. Much like if we would have had the korban pesach, the paschal offering, we wouldn't we would not eat any more after that either. Now we say again, so aim maftir and achra pesach afikomen that we do not eat anything after we have the afikomen. Now, just like there is a law of ein maftirin, which means nothing is eaten after the paschal offering, the afikomen, in order that the taste of that paschal offering, or in our case, that matzah, remains clear, so too your answer should be clear and understandable, so that afterwards the child should be left with a clear understanding and absolutely no doubt or ambiguities. It's very important. You need to answer a person and make sure they understand. Um, whenever I, someone asks a question, I'll always say, have I answered your question? Because it's important. Because sometimes you understand because you know what you're saying. They may not. And it's important that when you say, when you leave a person, you leave them with what they need. Otherwise, it was an exercise in futility. And again, that'll get back to the last son who was afraid to ask. Some people are embarrassed. So you need to ask them to make sure that they really do understand. Also, it's interesting that Rashi translates the word Mirma, with Yaakov taking the blessings from Esav. Mirma, not as deceit, guile, but actually wisdom. And it's interesting that the word Mirma and Afikomen both have the same gematria of 287, based on a Yitzchak sender. Uh, so again, so it wasn't a used guile. He didn't use deceit, he just used, uh, he just used intellect. And again, many say that when Yaakov took the blessing from Esau, it was the night of Pesach, again, the night of miracles, when we are saved. And just like the laws of Pesach, we teach about the Afikomen, which leaves a good taste in your mouth, so too all the laws should be taught in a way that leaves a positive impression afterwards, based in the, uh, the Yisachar Tov, Dov of Bells, Bells Rebbe. And it continues with the Russia. Now, Russia, take the, the letters, Reish, Shin, Ayin, 
stands for Rebbeinu Shalom, the master of the world, that we believe that with the coming of the Messiah, even the evil person will believe. Um, now, in what we call the Atbash, we've mentioned it before, but very quickly taking the first letter, the Aleph, and exchanging it for the last letter, the Toph, the Bays, which exchanging it for the Shin, called the Atbash, Kabbalistic way of changing letters around, that the Yud Ke Vavke, God's name of mercy, which has an numerical value of 26, and it becomes a very special number in Judaism, that um, if the Atbash, that number 26 becomes 300 which is the numerical value of the word letter Shin, has the numerical value of 300. So even though the Rush is evil, if you take the first letter and the last letter of the word Russia, Reish and Ayan is the word Ra, meaning an evil. But still, at his core, the Shin is in the middle, alluding to God, that we must try to reveal that godly soul that is within him. So it alludes to God's name of mercy. So even an evil person, at his core, still has a godly soul that we still need to connect to. And um, so he says, Maha Omer, what does the evil person say? Ma what is the service to you? So again, so the evil son sees the service to God as an avoda, as a burden. Uh, and this becomes one of the problems. So he's really not asking a question, but making a statement that is arrogant and provocative, again, based on the Barbanel. Also, as we mentioned before, there's no mention of God in his question. Also, this is established by man, is what he's saying. It's just really an excuse for a good meal of wine and meat. So again, that's his whole basis. So we say, Lachem, we tell him, Lachem velo to you, and not to him. Lafisha Hotsi is Asman Klaus, since he has taken himself out from the congregation, covered equally, he has no, he doesn't believe in the main essence of what we do. The Afata Hake Ashina, the Armalo, and you should also blunt his teeth and say to him, Bavur Zab, because of this, Asa Shem Li, God did to me, but say, Simi Mizran, he took me out of Egypt. Li, Velo Lo, I and not him. Elohoya Shem, we tell him, if you had been there, Lohoya Nigal, he would not have been redeemed. Now, what does it mean to blunt his teeth? Why this term of blunting his teeth? that he feels the man was created perfect and does not need a God. And we say to him, what about teeth, which a person does not possess at birth, based on the Birkas Hashir? And it's interesting, not only that, a child doesn't have teeth when he's born. And it's interesting that teething is one of the most painful things a child will go through. Why is that? Because a child, up until that time, thinks of his parents as God. And when he sees his parents can do nothing, again, it shows him there's something above that. And again, the fact of no pain, no gain. And also that what we learn as children, we lose those teeth, and then we get our adult teeth. That a person can't have his values based on what a child has, which is selfish and self-centered. A person needs to grow into an adult. And again, we know there are 32 teeth, which allude to the 32 gates of wisdom. And also lave, the gematria of the word heart. That a person should always have a good heart. A lave tov is the, is the essence of a good person. And... Um, Also, the, the, the uh, numerical word, probably the numerical value of the word uh, Russia is 570. Subtract the word for Shina, which is teeth, leaves the word Sadik, which is righteous. So if we can blunt his teeth and answer him properly and deal with him, he may well become a very righteous person because sometimes people that are the worst can also be the best. And it's important for us to always have hope and remember that. And it continues with the Tom, with the simple son. What does he say? Mazos. What's this? And we say to him, with a strong hand, God took us out of Egypt from the house of servitude. So he's a simple son. But still, it doesn't make sense because we know that Yaakov was called an Ishtam Yoshev Aholam, a simple person, also meaning perfect, who dwelled in tents. So his question has to be deeper. So what's his real question if he's Yaakov? And the question is, that on, on Rosh Yom Kippur, we say the tshuva tzfil and tzedakah, that the repentance, prayer, and, and charity will change the decree. And on top of those three words is the word tzom, which is fasting, kol, which is voice, and which is prayer, and then um, uh, tzedakah, which is mammon, money. If you add the three up, 136 times three is 406, pardon me, 408, which is the numerical value of the word zos.
So the simple sum, which is not simple, he's asking Mazos, how do I know that tshuva, feel and tzedakah, these three things, will get, well, God will forgive me for if I do it. And we answer because the Jews in Egypt did it and God took them out with a strong hand. How's that? First we know they cried out to God the word kol. Then we know they, they were afflicted, so that's tzom, which is fasting. And then the last part of mamon, that God did not have them give charity, but God required Dabra Ba'aznayam talk in the ears of the people to take the charity, to take the money from the Egyptians so that the promise to Avram Rabinu would be kept. They did all three. And what happened? But Jose God, God took them out with a strong hand and they were freed from servitude. So too with us. If we follow Tshuva, Tzvila, and Sadaka, that we can be assured, just like these Jews that were taken out of Egypt were forgiven and brought to Mount Sinai to be given the Torah with all the glory that with it, so too will we be forgiven on Rosh Hashanah if we follow this recipe that God has given us. Uh, I think we're out of time here. So I think that what we'll do is next week when we get together, we'll continue with the son, Shani De Elishal, that doesn't know how to ask. And uh, again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a great Shabbos.